10 awesome things about the Owl House Season 3 poster. One, two, three, go! Number 10. Even though it did say that the first special is going to pick up right after the events of Season 2, it's heavily implied that there's going to be a time skip at some point based on the main cast's heavily altered appearances. Another year older, another year wiser, I always say. If this is true, it would mean we'd be glossing over the whole characters getting used to Earth life thing that Amphibia did in favor of getting right back to the story, which I think is a good idea given how little time they have to wrap everything up. With that being said though, I really am interested to see what our favorite witches have been up to since they arrived on Luce's doorstep. My money says that Willow built a zen garden in the backyard to relax, Gus is hosting illusion magic shows to earn some cash to buy equipment, Luce and Amity go on the occasional date in between researching ways to get home, and Hunter is still Hunter. This is my grave. Want me to make you one too? Number 9. Did you get a haircut? Yes I did, thank you for noticing. Everybody's hairstyles are definitely a little bit different, which is the main thing that made me assume a time skip. Hunter got cut a little bit short, plus he got rid of that weird dangly curl thing he always had, which I think is an improvement. Willow's got an extra notch on her belt, or pigtails, meaning her hair got a little bit longer. Gus looks about the same, except that he's rocking the beanie look, which I think suits him really well. And whoa, mama, not only is Amity perpetuating her new purple dew, but she's also growing it out as well. Green-haired Amity was cute, purple-haired Amity was boss, but long purple-haired Amity is the look that deserves all the stands. What else do you want, a kiss on the cheek? Number 8, our little witch Di Espana has got a whole new look as well, and it's sure to be familiar to diehard fans like me. See you later, alligator, pull a seat out for the beta! It's Luce's beta design, or at least parts of it. We got the orange beanie, longer hair, striped shirt straight out of the pilot, baggy pants, sneakers, and... Well, not the same jacket, but I prefer Ida's varsity blazer, honestly. It's so awesome that Dana was able to incorporate this design into the actual canon before the show gets shelved, and in my opinion, this is the best that Luce has looked all series. Number 7. Belos is in fact going to return as an antagonist of the series, which is something that I have been hoping for ever since he got Nickelodeon gacked in the season 2 finale. It's unknown how the heck he's gonna reform since he's just a tiny morph sized ball of gunk, but maybe he somehow manages to convince a more able bodied person to lend him a hand. Or my personal theory, since a graveyard is prominently featured in the poster, maybe he actually reanimates a corpse and uses that as a temporary vessel for his evil doings. Writing to communicate, always staying in the shadows, just being a creepy looming presence everywhere he goes. We know that he can reshape his sludge form as he sees fit, making things like spikes and swords and whatnot, so maybe he stretches himself to the point that he basically creates tendons and ligaments that can move the body parts around. Being just as much of a manipulative puppet master as he's been throughout the whole series, but this time literally controlling a puppet. Something like this would totally fit with the dark themes of the show, and would also just be metal as heck. Number 6. On the opposite side of Bellos, we have these ominous eyes watching over the cast. It's possible that these were just added to fill space instead of just having this awkward chunk of blackness over here, but maybe this image signifies the watching eyes of other future enemies that the team will make, since they're the exact same blue color as Bellos, who is also their enemy. Or maybe the eyes are a reference to Ida's dimensional portal, implying that there are other gateways to the Boiling Isles that the main cast still have yet to locate, somewhere off in the distance, just out of reach. Or, or maybe it's just meant to signify the back of Monster Bellos, which had all those ominous blue eyes on it, and it would make sense because Bellos is facing away from it. I don't know, I'm probably overthinking such a minute and unimportant detail, but hey, that's what you all subscribed to me for, right? Number 5. This one isn't necessarily on the poster, but the title of the first hour-long special is Thanks to Them. And considering that the Owl House has a habit of creating word puzzles with the first letters of the episode titles in every season, I'm calling it right now, and you can quote me on this, that the next two special titles are gonna begin with the letters O and H, making the final word puzzle for the show T-O-H, aka the Owl House's initials. If that actually ends up happening, I promise you that I will eat a brownie on camera. And if it doesn't happen, I'll probably eat a brownie off camera anyways. Brownies are freaking good, man. Number 4. Camilla rocking its street style with a baseball bat is freaking awesome. You do not want to wind up on the business end of an angry Latina mamacita's weapon. When the shoe just won't do, you gotta break out the Louisville and take him to Hurtville. Bring the pain, Mrs. N. Number 3. It looks like the Palismans of our favorite quintet have somehow managed to make it to the human realm despite not being visible when they all flew through the portal in King's Tide. 
Maybe this ties into my theory that there are other portals to the demon realm, with the palace men escaping through one, finding their masters, and eventually leading them back home? Or maybe they're tucked away in their coats or something? I have no idea. But hey, if it means that we'll be getting more Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack, that's A-OK -okay by me. Number 2, V's new human form is so freaking adorable. She's no longer Luce's Echo Fighter, she actually has her own moveset if you catch my reference. I'm not entirely sure what kind of benefit she could add to this operation. Maybe she could be a mystique-like master of espionage if they ever need to sneak into some place and grab something important, but whatever they decide to use her for, I'm just so glad that she achieved her own unique human identity and her must-protect rating has gone up by at least 17 Cs in my book. And number one, everything you see on this poster is gonna come to fruition in just one freaking month from now. Get hyped! Whew. Anyway, sorry this vid is a little on the shorter side. I had a lot of stuff to do this week. I'll have a longer vid for you next time, but for now, I gotta go run off the rest of my excitement. Bye!